Konnichiwa and welcome to Japan. Friends, I'd like to invite you to the final installment of this year's Faraway Places at Your Fingertips. And we are visiting Japan. Very much so because the Summer Olympics, which were scheduled for last year and are rescheduled for this year, are going to be held in Tokyo. It's very exciting. Before we get started, you can pull out your bingo game if you want to play. Remember, there's two ways to play. You can play along with as I'm talking about each slide, or you can wait and play later with your family and friends. All right, it's time to come to the big map. Oh, Japan is right here on the eastern coast of, of Asia. And you can see there are nearly 6,800 islands in Japan, but four main islands. The biggest of those four main islands is Honshu, which happens to be the um, seventh largest island in the entire world. Japan is slightly um, smaller than California, slightly larger than the country of Germany, and the Biggest cities are Tokyo, Yokohama, Osaka, and Nagoya. You can see that because it's an island, the seas around it are the Philippine Sea, the Northern Pacific, the Sea of Japan, and the East China Sea. All right, so there is a population of 126.5 million people in Japan. The capital is Tokyo. And um, you might pronounce Japan as Nihon or Nippon if you were using the Japanese language. Um, the government is a constitutional monarchy. We call the head of Japan the emperor, Emperor, Nur, em, emperor Naruhito. And um, the main language is Japanese. The main religions are the the majority of people living there are Buddhist and Shintoist. Shintoist, um, and their their um, money is called the yen. Um, the prime minister is Prime Minister Suga, and he's been in office just since September fourteenth of last year. All right, so if you are going to say it in Japanese, we can say um, kon konnichiwa for hello, sayonara for goodbye, and we're going to take a break here, and I'm going to put up a video so you can hear the exact ways of saying some of the words. All right, friends, so as you can see, we have the Japanese language right up here on our screen. So if we were going to say hello, it would sound like this. Konnichiwa. Let's try it again. Konnichiwa. Now, goodbye. You know, I don't like to say goodbye, but here's how we say it. Sayonara. Let's try it one more time. Sayonara. Now, we always like to use our best manners. Please would sound like this. Onegaishimasu. Let's try it one more time. Onegaishimasu. And again, our, our good manners would have us say thank you. Domo arigato. One more time. Domo arigato. Yes is... Hai. Oh, nice and quick. Can you try it? Let's do it together. One, two, three, go. Hai. Hai. And although no is no in almost every language, it is not no in Japanese. Let's listen. Ie. One more time. Ie. Very good, friends. All right. Did you know? Did you know that there are over 1,000 earthquakes each year in Japan? That's because they're on that ring of fire. We're going to have a slide about that in a moment. There are millions of vending machines across Japan. And much like here, they might sell candy or soda, but they sell everything. You can get a cell phone. You can get an iPad. You can get an iPod. You can get all sorts of things and vending machines in Japan. Um, they have one of the world's largest economies. Their, their fish market is huge, and their favorite sport is, would you know it, baseball. Oh, goodness. 
So their highest mountain is Mount Fuji. It's about 12,388 feet high, and it was a, a volcano. It is a volcano, but it's a dormant. That means like a sleeping volcano. The last time it erupted would have been in the year 17. Oh, seven. Now, we do call Japan the land of the rising sun. That's because years and years ago, when Marco Polo visited China, the Chinese people said that, the, that Japan is the direction of where the sun rises. And there, there is a, a custom that, that many, many years ago, in the 7th century, the emperors were talking to one another and... When they were addressing, the emperor from Japan said, from the emperor of the land of the rising sun to the emperor of the land of the setting sun. I kind of thought that was a little bit fun. All right. Now, if you were going to visit Japan, something you would definitely want to do is ride that bullet train. It is really fun. You can see the cities that it goes to and from by looking at the map over here. Here's an inside. Kind of looks to me a lot like an airplane if you've ever had a chance to fly. So some fun pictures. I encourage you to look it up. It goes nearly 200 miles per hour or 320 kilometers per hour and you can get to where you're going really fast and quite safe. Now we were talking about the Ring of Fire. Japan definitely sits upon the Ring of Fire and we talk about that a lot. That makes that that makes Japan a good place for earthquakes, tsunamis, all sorts of um, volcanoes. Um, there's 108 active volcanoes as we speak, and it um, I like I said earlier, they have over a thousand earthquakes every year. A favorite sport is shogun. Shogun is a descendant of the jujitsu art form. We might refer to it as sumo wrestling. Now, it used to be something that people did for the emperor and it was ceremonial and it was it, it was to show honor to their monarchy. Um, it, or it's recognized by the IOC as a sport and um, kind of interesting to watch, a little different than anything that we do here in the U.S., but very, very fun to watch. Something else very, very important in Japan is their robotics. They are making robots that look and sound like real people and very excited about it. As a matter of fact, about a quarter of a million people work in the robotics industry, and that is increasing year after year after year. They're very proud of the, the steps they have taken towards um, improved robotics in, in, the, um, in the tech industry. Something else that you might know something about is manga or anime. That is a word that comes from Japan. Uh, manga especially, it's a word that man means whimsical or impromptu, and the ga means pictures. So if we say whimsical and impromptu pictures, it definitely describes the um, the manga or anime books and we have plenty here at the library for you to come and take a look at um it's very interesting it's very expressive and if you are in japan sometimes we think of graphic novels as simply for the young people children or young adults but everyone in japan reads the manga or anime type books so it wouldn't be just for the children all ages. You might just be at the store and someone's waiting in line for their McDonald's and they're reading a manga book. Any grown-ups, kids, everyone. And in addition to uh, the manga or anime, Hello Kitty. If you're out there and you've ever read a Hello Kitty book, Hello Kitty comes directly from Japan. And I know she is someone that a lot of you out there really, really enjoy books. They have a Hello Kitty store. Something to remember is comes from Japan. 
their fish industry, we um, talked about that a little bit earlier, one of the biggest parts of their economy is the fish industry. And there's over, over $14 billion um, in com commercial fishing each year. And there's over 200,000 fishing vessels in Japan. That is a lot of boats. Now, we talked a little bit about this. We are talking about Japan because the Summer Olympics, which were supposed to be last summer, and as you can see, I, it looks like they're going forward and that they're going to happen this year. I'm, they're still working out some kinks in it, but I have seen the Olympic torch traveling, so I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. Really, really fun. People work their entire lives, work out to be part of the Olympics. Some of the Olympic sports, the summer sports, would be anything you see on the screen here. Stop and think for just a minute. You can stop the recording. What might be your favorite summer Olympic sport? I love watching the gymnasts. They are so beautiful and graceful, men and women alike. The swimmers, the divers, the ball players. All of those people, I love watching the Olympics, and you see people from all over the world um, trying to prove that they are the best in their sport. So friends, this is completing our slideshow for my portion. It's time to see Miss Debbie and hear about a special book from Japan. Thanks, Miss Kathy. Miss Debbie here today with my little book recommendation. There is so much information about Japan and so many facets to this culture, culture that I couldn't hardly pick on one. So I decided on this great little book called On My Way to School, Japan. And in this book, this little girl is making her way to school and she just notices so many different parts of, of what makes Japan, Japan. So I thought it was a great thing that you could read this book and notice different parts of Japan and then pick on something that you might be interested in and do some more research and get some different books on that specific aspect of Japan. So, and the best part about this book too is that when she gets done with school, she's getting ready for Children's Day, which they celebrate on May 5th. Now, this is a great festival and they fly these kites that look like carps and each member of the family has their very own. And they fly these kites from uh, about the middle of April through May in honor of this. And then they have this big festival on May 5th. So this is where our um, craft is coming from. We're going to create our own carp wind sock. So meet me over at the craft table, kids, and we'll get started. Okay, so in your kit that you get from the library, you're going to have an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper like this. We want it in the landscape position when we start. We're going to have um, some fun Google eyes and a couple of backdrops for our Google eyes. We're going to have about 45 to 50 pieces of these um, oval shaped tissue paper pieces in different colors. And we're going to have a little bit of ribbon for our hanger. And this one inch um, black piece of paper that's gonna be like a little finishing touch on our fish. And then you're also gonna get um, about six or eight of these um, strips of cray paper in different colors for the, um, the windsock part of our craft. So let's get started. You're gonna, oh, and what you're gonna need is a stapler and tape and a glue stick, okay? So let's get started. So we're gonna take this and um, maybe I can work so that you guys can see a little bit better. So we're gonna start our first row and maybe the best thing to do is lay out, I think nine tissue paper pieces look kind of good. So I'm just gonna, uh, and you can overlap them a little bit as you go along. One, two, three. You can have a certain pattern or you can randomize things here. So here is three. Let me get this stuff out of the way here so I don't accidentally glue it on. And you see how I'm, I have it about half on the paper and half off the paper on the bottom. I'm gonna do a random pattern because I think that's just kind of fun. And you'll have different colors in your kit depending on 
what the library has in our stockpile here. So everybody's might be a little bit different and they'll be different just because you made them too, won't you? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm gonna try for my ninth one here. Okay, like that. Okay, and then you're gonna start your second row. Like this. These kind of stick together sometimes, so you have to be a little bit careful. You see how I'm, I'm doing them half, about half down is where I want these to be into the first row. And again, you can overlap so you can get your nine across. I kind of like the randomness of the whole thing. But you can do as much planning as you'd like as you do this. It gives a nice effect, doesn't it? And you see how really the colors don't make that much difference because they all blend together really nicely. And then I'm going to put a green one on the end. What do you think? Okay. So you kind of get it, kids, don't you, and stuff. So I'm going to start my third row up here with a red one. And then we're going to do this. We're going to do one, two, three, and then I'm going to do four and five. So we're going to take a little break, and um, I'm going to do the different rows, and then we'll meet back here again, okay? So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, kids, so I am, I, had, I did rows three and four, and now I'm just about done with five. I hope you were doing the same while I was doing mine. I'm just gonna put up the finishing touches here. I got my last two to do. So there is one, two, three, four, five. You start from the bottom, do the next one, the next one, the next one, and the next one. And now we're gonna put our finishing touch on this. Remember I told you this black piece was kind of, to kind of finish off our rows of our scales for our fish. So what you're gonna do is line up the ends and cover up maybe the top third of your tissue paper. See how that works? And it makes that look good. And then we're gonna take our black eyes and kind of figure out where the middle is because we're gonna have to bend the paper around, aren't we? To make our windsock. So we wanna put our eyes about in the middle like that. And then we're gonna take our fun Google eyes and we're gonna put those on. And now we have our fish front all done, doesn't it? Okay, so now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna take our streamers. And I think about six of them will do it. So you'll have different colors, just like you'll have different colors of the, of the oval tissue paper. You're gonna have different colors of, I'm gonna turn this this way because it's just gonna be easier for me to do it the way you would be doing it and this stuff. So I'm gonna take it this way and I'm gonna put it down and I'm gonna take a yellow one and put it on. And whatever colors I have in my kit. Oh, I think I got a green one here. It'll be fine. It'll be all the colors that you... Oh, I don't think I want a green one next to a green one, do I? I think I'll take a blue one next. And then another purple one. I don't want a purple one next to a purple one when I bend it, do I? So what color should I end with, do you think? I think, I think the green, huh? Let's do the green. Okay. So there's our green. Okay, oops. Yeah, try to get them all about the same length because I'm going to try to cut the ends all about the same length, okay? So you see how that worked then? You put them all along there. Okay, so now kind of comes the tricky part. So, have the head towards you and bend it. Oh, this part has to be glued down really good, I gotta tell you. I always run into this when I do it, so make sure you get that end glued down really good. Okay, so then we're gonna bend it around and hold it in the center when you bend it. And you just want 
this part overlapped about a staple's worth because you want it to be as round as, you want to get as much of the roundness out of it as you possibly can. Then you're going to take your stapler and then you're going to staple that top piece. See how I matched the top up? And it was just about a staple's width is all I did. And then down here at the bottom, this is a little bit trickier because you got all this tissue paper, don't you? So you have to find a, a spot to get your stapler in there and not crinkle all your tissue. There we go, I think I got it now. And you wanna staple that down good. Oops, I missed. Let me try that again. Oh, it's hard to do this with all this stuff, isn't it? There we go. Okay, I'm gonna hold that in the center. And then you can put some glue in, down the center too to hold things a little bit better. But I'm gonna try to get this stapler down as far as I can and put another one in there without bending things too much, I hope. Okay, so that's that. How do we do with our eyes in the front? Oh, yep, they're still there. And then the last thing we have to do is put our little hanger on. So we're gonna put a piece here. And we're gonna put a piece on the other side. And again, you want your eyes in the middle, so make sure you're putting your hanger on either side of your eyes. I'm going to put another piece of tape in there, like that, hold that, and we're done. So this is our finished carp wind sock. It's our last craft for this session of homeschool, faraway places at your fingertips. Um, I hope you enjoy the nice weather and have a great summer, and hopefully we'll see you back here in the fall. Take care. Back to Miss Kathy. Oh, friends, wasn't that great? I love the projects that Miss Debbie has come up with this year. We have had a great year with Adventures in Homeschooling. It has not been normal. It has not been the way most of us would like it, but it has been a good year of learning. So it is time for me to say sayonara or bye-bye for Adventures in Homeschooling 2020-2021. However, we're not saying goodbye at all. We're inviting you to come in this summer. We have a great summer adventure program planned. We're hoping to have some outdoor activities where we can come in and be together. But feel free, stop by, call, let us know how you're doing. We love you, we care about you, and we can't wait to see you again soon.